I'm here with Yuka Royer from the Business Desk. Hi there, Yuka. Hi, Tom. The uh, crypto industry is holding its breath for a big event. It's called Bitcoin Halving. What's that about? Well, Tom, it's a technical event that happens roughly every four years that cuts the supply of Bitcoin by half. Uh, the next one is, is expected to happen on Friday and it's generating a lot of hype. A crypto exchange and even a multinational bank have released ads emphasizing how even more valuable an asset Bitcoin could become after the halving. Well, in 2012, one Bitcoin bought you this much pizza. In 2016, this much pizza. In 2020, this much pizza. Roughly every four years, the future supply of Bitcoin is reduced. So historically, you get more, not less. Now, for the uninitiated, Bitcoins are mined by a network of computers solving extremely complicated maths problems to verify transactions on its blockchain, which is a decentralized public ledger that keeps all records. Now, once a new block of transactions is added to the blockchain, the miner gets a reward in the form of newly released Bitcoins. When a person by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto uh, wrote the code for the technology, he decided to cap its total supply to 21 million. Now, and in order to maintain scarcity, the algorithm cuts the reward for Bitcoin mining by half every 210,000 blocks added. In 2009, 50 tokens were rewarded to each transaction block. After three halving events since then, the current reward is six and a quarter and will go down to 3.125 soon. It will go on like this until the magic number 21 million coins have been mined, Tom. OK, so going back to this event, Bitcoin halving, how does that event impact real life investors? Well, with the history of volatility surrounding Bitcoin, it's hard to predict, really. But past halvings did lead to a surge in its price. And now, a year after the first halving, the price of Bitcoin was up almost 9,000 percent, but it was still at $1,000 back then. Last month, it hit a new record of around $75,000. It has retreated from that level over the past week, with some analysts warning of a potential drop after the next halving. OK, uh, in another news story you've picked out for us, a business news story, uh, we're turning to Venezuela, the oil sector being dealt a pretty hefty blow by a decision from Washington to reimpose sanctions. But the US administration decided not to renew a special license agreed last October with Venezuela that allowed it to freely export its crude and boost investment in the sector. Now, that deal, which expired early Thursday, uh, was made on condition that President Nicolas Maduro uh, implement his promised roadmap towards uh, this summer's elections. US companies have 45 days to wrap up operations, but Car Caracas says it remains open to business uh, for, with foreign firms, including European joint, uh, joint venture partners. Johnny Miljamin has this report. Nicolas Maduro didn't mince his words as the Venezuelan president learned of renewed, crippling US sanctions on his country. When did we become a gringo colony, a star of the United States? There is no sanction, there is no threat that today will harm Venezuela's effort to build a new productive economic model. Washington refused to extend a license that had allowed U.S. trade with Venezuela's oil, gas and mining sectors for the past six months. That October deal was contingent on promises of free and fair elections in 2024. But the agreement fell away after Maduro refused his opponents to run against him. The regime has intensified repression. They've incarcerated more people. They have persecuted and barred opposition members. Venezuela's state-run oil producer, PDVSA, could now be hit particularly hard. Business is blocked with the U.S. unless a specific license from the U.S. Treasury Department can be obtained. But it's turning to other partners. Spanish company Repsol on Wednesday vowed to continue its work with the Caracas oil giant. Today only confirms the commitment that we already made on December 18th of last year, and it is a consequence of the commitment of both parties. We will continue to do business in Venezuela and support its growth through oil. Adding more economic woe on an already struggling Venezuelan population could also yet bring risk to the Biden administration ahead of U.S. elections. Venezuela has vowed to burden the country with mass migration of its own nationals, should the same policies continue.
24's John Emil Jamin with that report. Now, global oil markets uh, are pretty steady as new sanctions, uh, Western sanctions, were also imposed on individuals in Iran. Uh, now, US crude prices are currently slightly up a day after concern over weaker demand outweighed geopolitical concerns and significantly pri uh, pushed prices down by as much as 3%. Brent crude right now is pretty slat, uh, flat, uh, dipping just 0.03% from the previous close. And that's it for business. Okay, thank you very much indeed for that business update. Yuka Roya there from the business desk.